being into the Libertines, um, having friends yeah. that used, um, always told myself that, like, I wasn't, I, I, like, it wouldn't get older me. Yeah. You know, I was young, like, 20-odd. Yeah, yeah. And it did, it did get older me, but, man, I tried so many, so many. I've been through three windshields, like, stolen cars, like, yeah, exes and exes' dad. One ex, the dad and the mum, the car crashed. Yeah, just like being locked, they like tried to get me clean and like they'd lock me in a room or whatever and I'd manage to get out, get the key and oh, just madness. Really? Yeah, once I was on the way to Howsham from Eastbourne, three o'clock in the morning, it was pitch black. I was going down like the A, whatever it was. Um, it's like a dual carriageway. There was no lights. I was doing about 90 because I was ill and I was trying to get to London quickly and back before the person knew that I'd taken the car. And I hit a roundabout that just came out of nowhere and I fucking jumped it, bro. Like, you know, like roundabouts that are banked yeah, yeah, with yeah. trees on? Yeah. I was like going and then, like, kind of look at my phone where I'm going. As I looked up, I saw I was doing like 85, 90, and there was a roundabout, like 100 yards. I thought, I can't slam the brakes on because I'll skid and it will be bad. I would roll this way. I was like, I'll try and jump it. Killer Keller Official dot com. <laughs> Street Culture TV. Killer Keller. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be. Trust me, you don't want to be anywhere else. Big shout to the sharers and carers, people who have been clocking, um, appreciating and valuing what we're doing from the very the beginning, you know. Um, and sometimes we uh, go back to go forward. So if you want to go and dive into some other stuff, uh, there's plenty of Killer Girl podcasts out there. So big up yourselves. How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hot Wars Summer 2024. Inside the house, with esteemed pleasure right here. Gentleman that embodies street culture. 360 to the fullest, a um, man of many lives, and uh, he's currently breathing fresh air into the tattoo That's scene it. of London. Okay. We have the life and times of the mighty Ross Hell. How are you, doing? <laughs> are you good? I'm good, how are you? I'm very good, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it's been in a while. Yeah, yeah. that's right, that's yeah. right. We'll definitely get into that. Um, you don't normally do many of these, do you? No, first one. First one. Mm. See, that's how Killer Killer podcast does it. See, see, see. It's like milkshake. It's yeah, hundred. But that that being said, though, bro, like a lot of people would have wanted you to come off a, a prefer of good reason. Yeah, um, you've had a life of many lives, Ross. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know where you want to start. <laughs> let's. Uh, well, first of all, let's start off by the tattoo world right yeah. now, because what what we're dealing with is this like almost like a reformat. Um, big up prods yep. uh, and all uh, all the uh, right uh, lanes boys, jobs in that. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Big up jobsy, you know, <laughs> and you know they cite you as very much a uh, a trailblazer of sorts that have really helped push. Spoken, yes, and push push things forward. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I was doing, I say, ignorant style tattoos out of my front room as a passion because really I was a builder. Um, tried an apprenticeship and I couldn't afford to do it. That was as simple as that. Like I had to work, I had rent to pay, I had a daughter, etc. Uh, as all, as we all do, you know. So um, just from the love of tattooing, I wanted to tattoo, and I just set a studio up in my yard and started posting things on Instagram, and it just kicked off from there, really. Ignorant tattooing. Yeah. Define that for the people outside. Um, it's a hard one, really. Uh, in my head, it's like anything you want it to be, really, that's not, like, an imperfection. It's an imperfection. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Saying that, um, yeah, it doesn't have to be shaded and take five hours to do it. Mm. It's just like, yeah, it can be a dot on your, under your eye and, and that means so much, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, it's not, I, I just like that, I mean, mm. and, and uh, yeah, pushing that, pushing that culture. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because it is, and, that night, I guess the naivety to the art inadvertently becomes the the hardest thing to kind of do. You know, when it's when it's too much, too much. Yeah, yeah, less yeah. Is more. Yeah, of course. Um, that in a sense that's true. 
but also, I mean, I love like blast overs, you know, like when it's a complete mess, mm. and then it's almost like there's just layers of tattoos. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's always been something I've pushed. Is that style, mm. like, but um, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Like I, I obviously. I'm coming back from not tattooing for like three years. Yeah. Three years, almost four years. Yeah. So a lot's changed from COVID to the pens mm. to things like that. Uh, a lot's changed. It seems everyone is a tattooist now. Mm. You know, like. Good luck with that. Yeah, no, 100. <laughs> you know, and why not? Like, yeah. I feel what it has done is people that pick up machines and tattoo from home is it's brought a style of its own. Like, mm. it's unique because they haven't learned. They've mm. literally just picked it up and done it, you know. Um, and there's a lot of people now that are tattooing at shops at a high level that started like that, you know. Yeah, I rate that as well. Yeah. It harks back to a Lal Hardy. Like, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. yeah. You know, 20 pence, yeah, go on, let's go into the tattoo shop and quickly mm. get a, a bird or a Legend. Dove. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I love that about tattoos. Um, it's because some people, they want a tattoo that day, they don't really care what it is, they just want to go and get tattooed. Um, yeah. And... That is, for me, is just wanting to be tattooed, yeah. you know, to have something on you. It doesn't mean it needs to necessarily be sacred mm. or, like, to mean anything to you. Like, yeah. if you want a tattoo, come and get tattooed. It's, it's not yeah. that deep, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a certain mindset for it not being that deep? Because some people have some mad sentimentality. Yeah, of course, yeah. You know, to, to just have a, you know, just a mum tattoo. That's one thing. <sighs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, she told me not to get my hands done when I was, like, in my 20s. And that was the first one I got. Yeah. It was mum and my hand. You clearly hadn't listened to <laughs> yeah. Ross, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted her to, like, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But that's the anarchic expression of tattooing, mm. isn't it? And yeah, it's come it a long way, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. A long, long way. Yeah. And like you say, the tec techniques and... Techniques, styles. Um, yeah, I mean, there's people... You know, there's there, some people go a bit mad with it. Mm. You know, I've seen people do... Tattoos jumping out of airplanes and on trains and things. Because obviously, these pens, you don't have to plug them in. No. It's a battery, you can tattoo it anywhere. What? So, like, honestly, there's, I can't, I don't even know the guy's name, but there's another guy who does it, like, I think surfing, going down a hill on a skateboard. Like, adrenaline tattoos. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Subculture. That's, for me, it's a bit mad. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I just don't feel results. like you have to have a, have an apprenticeship to, if you're passionate about it, mm. you're only gonna get gonna get good at tattooing by tattooing, mm. you know? Mm. Um, I know people feel like there's some kind of like, like thing you need to earn because someone's teaching you how, their trade. Mm. And I do get that. And by all means, if that's you, do that. Mm. But um, it's not for everyone, you know? Mm. Like it doesn't suit everyone's lives, especially people that need to work most of the day mm. to afford to live. Mm. You got. I was doing it. In, I was going to work Monday to Friday um, as a builder at six in the morning with my boy Dylan Proudfoot. You know, mm. he was my right hand man. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, six until like seven. Come home, have bath, mm. eat. My client would turn up at eight till till like midnight. Wow. And I was busy. Like I was sat with four or five people in the evenings. Whilst then, working. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. And then like started getting a bit mad, but. Then I got a job offer at Sanglu on the weekends. <laughs> so then I was working Saturday, Sunday, wow. tattooing. And do you know what's mad is I suffer from epilepsy. And uh, my first day at Sanglu, I had a seizure on a bus on the way to work. Before I was to get to tattoo four people, I woke up in an ambulance. I didn't tell anyone this. And I just was like, no, no, I need to go work. Like I was so like, I can't let this guy down. Mm -hmm. it's my first day, I've got four people waiting. And I went and tattooed. Like, they were good tattoos. Like, four people that day, I didn't tell anyone. I just got out of the cab and walked down Kingston Road and got went to work. Yeah, I need more tenaciousness from employees <laughs> like that. I want more tenacity <laughs> like that. Top deck as well. They had to get me down the stairs somehow. I'm a big guy. Like. Wow. <laughs> and what, this is the first exposed moment of, of truth there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it was a long time ago. I got the sack, by the way, so that's fine. Uh, right, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every cloud, I guess. Because yeah. then you went on and you, you, you know. Yeah. It's led you to be here in. in of in, course, in man. Many different guises. And, you know, we're going to get into some more deeper subjects. So, mm. um, <clears throat> originally from Hastings? Yeah, Hastings, yeah. I was a uh, BMX. I used to ride BMX. Did you? Yeah, I was pro for quite a few years. 
rode for federal bikes, um, or could choose seventies and um, seventies distro, then four down, then metal bikes. Yeah. Boy. Travelled the world doing it. Travelled the world. Yeah, went to America, props, a couple of mega tours. Really. Yeah. What was that experience like? I mean, that is just like, I'll see you later, Mum. I've got the tattoo, I remember you. I'm out. I'm yeah, out. Yeah. I'm out. That must have been insane. But, like, BMX kind of um, was what kind of almost got me into tattoos a little bit because everyone I looked up to was tattooed. Mm. Like, yeah. And then I got into it. Like, Tom Hooper, he's from, a, from BMX. Mm -hmm. He's one of the, the, like, lead tattooists for this, you know, what he's doing. Mm. Like, he's amazing. Thomas Hooper, you should check him out. Yeah, check out Thomas Hooper on the Google, mm. you know it is. Uh, so, again, just extending conversation into the whole street culture. I mean, that is already, you know, you're on the outer fringes with beer mixing and the tattoo yeah. came in. I mean, this was, this was your lifestyle. Yeah, every day, like, beer mix was... I'd finish work, cos I, I was uh, learning to be a plumber. My stepdad made me do that. So I was going to college, and I was going to work as a plumber, but then as soon as I finished work, I was riding bikes. Yeah. Wow. So like, always hasting skate park. Um, my experience of BMXers, and this is a very short lived moment in my <laughs> life, is they're in the garage all the time fixing the fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> they go out, break it, and then come back and spend the rest of the night fixing the fuckers. Pretty fucking. much, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, they've got a bit better nowadays, but yeah, yeah I remember we used to break a lot of forks. Like head tubes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to snap them. You used to just snap them. Yeah, 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 a couple, yeah. It's just always, it, it always surprised <laughs> me. I think there's a there's a deeper uh, there's a deeper um, adm admiration. I think BMXers have for the for the mechanics and the process. And I think that's mm. uh, often overlooked, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, of course. I mean, they're pretty simple nowadays. Like mm. they've been simplified a lot. The bars are a lot bigger. Mm. They got plastic pegs and plastic pedals now and shit. Yeah, yeah. They're very light, much lighter. Yeah. But, um, yeah, mid-2000s, we were doing... Yo. Uh, I stopped when I was about 25, 26. What made you stop? Moving to London. Yeah. Um, and just being... Injuries and, like, my lifestyle at the time, I was mm. partying a lot. Mm -hmm. London, you know, like, mm. Shoreditch back back in the day was... Especially when you've got a name and reputation and something you do. Well, yeah. Then that becomes a... It was yeah. a bit of a, yeah. And, like, I'd have people come to shoot, like, ads for magazines mm -hmm. and then I'd end up like breaking my foot or like hurt mm. myself then I couldn't work yeah, yeah. and obviously when you're you know you got a job that's kind of what you yeah and that's that that was kind of meant the main thing is yeah he's growing up and having responsibilities basically mm. well I say that actually I was going to get fucked up but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um self-destructive is it very self-destructive comes from the uh, Loving punk, I think, like, mm. yeah, like, my idols growing up was Sid Vicious, Vivian from the Young Ones, and you know that film Made in Britain, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Wow. Skinny Man done yeah, it. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. That, that film, man, I loved it. Hence, like, this whole skinhead thing, like, yeah. But growing up, yeah. So you can understand mm. where that, that um, self destructive nature comes from. Very metal. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it, that's the thing with punk, isn't it? And I think um, it does have a kinship with with hip hop in a sense, but there is something so much more um, ag aggressive and um, true. It's purity, yeah, it isn't comes it? across as very aggressive, but really, the, the most punks are soft as shit. They're all vegans. They want to save the world. Yeah. They hate anything fascist, racist. You know, like real punks. Yeah. It's a, it, you know, mm. it, it's a, it's a facade. I feel for a lot of them, right? Because they were really after moshing. They want a hug, right? Really? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's so sweet. <laughs> Anything like you know, yeah. yeah Anti-establishment. You a fan of Bob Villain and yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they're my peoples. Yeah, sick. Yeah, 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 I love what he's doing. I love that, like that, that clash of cultures. Mm. You know, and it just Frank it works. Frank's a good friend. I don't know. Yeah, he's sound. He seems sound as a Yeah, he's a good friend. I don't know. Um, a flash day with him at San Blue. No, really? Yeah, me and Frank done one a few days after I was working there. Really? Yeah, it was a good, good day. Wow. So uh, Shoreditch was the, the landing pad? Yeah, it was. This is a long time ago. Um, was it 20, like 2004 or 5? 
Well, okay. So, yeah, I was living there at the time, pretty much. Yeah. So I know exactly what it was like. Yeah. Um, cargo had just opened up. Yeah, that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. Right? I went to the Macbeth. Did you? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, and the Dragon Bar when yeah. it was in in Shore, yeah. in uh, Old Street. Yeah. So I, I lived one. just down by the bingo hall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was literally around there. So, yeah, yeah, no. and all of that. Yeah, um, yeah, mad, mad times growing up then, when like indie was was big. Yeah, like like Towers of London. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that kind of era. Yeah, it was kind of mad. Okay. But yeah, I worked there. I worked at Dragon Bar. Um, to get away from building and yeah. to try and be an artist. Yeah. It's kind of why I left. Mm. I, I was sick of the routine mm -hmm. uh, and working for someone, you know. Mm -hmm. But I ended up doing a lot of building work because I still needed to pay the bills. So I wasn't I was working for someone as such. I had my own little building business mm -hmm. and friends working for me. Um, but then tattooing managed to get busy enough to let me put that down, put the tools mm -hmm. down. Um, but yeah. There was a number of tattoo places around that, that area, wasn't there? Yeah, um, Happy Sailor, Pricks on the corner. Yeah. Yeah, I've done a little, like, I say little, maybe like three or four months in Happy Sailor as an apprentice. <laughs> um, whilst I was working in bars and things. Uh, but it's just, like I say, I couldn't be there enough, so mm. I had to let it go. It's always when you land in London, it's, it's fight or flight, isn't it? You know? Totally. The balance <clears throat> of work and earning while living and partying yeah it doesn't last long you know six months if you're lucky and you, yeah. it, you, you get it you get it right you can extend your stay no totally yeah, yeah. um loads of connections here mate like you know yeah. just leapfrogging from job to job and person to person really but the thing is you've got a persona you know there's an there's an aura about you mm. there's 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 a there's a there's a, there's a head on the shoulders and you can tell the moment you meet you that you've you've got a life's worth of experience. And I think that aura, that energy, mm. it translates on entry, on introduction. Mm. And then and then you become the face of town, or at least in a particular, you know, yeah, groups. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when, I, when like, we was, I was trying to push this, this uh, tattooing thing. We used to do a lot of, um, like, pop-ups. They yeah. were completely illegal, but we'd, like, hire a place or uh, open a place fill it with five or six tattoos for the weekend and, like, advertise it on Insta. Mm. Um, but they were all homegrown. Like, I had the first one, me, Stephen Donahue, Tropical Dan, Trap House, and European Sun. Nice. I big up Trap House, by the way. Yeah, nice. yeah that, was, um, that was mad. Yeah, that is mad. And, yeah, there was queues of people. Like, it was, it, they were a vibe. Done three of them. Mm. They were quite successful. Um, this was a while ago now. Mm. But all the, you know, just really all, of... yeah, just all, all people that are self-taught, yeah. like, just kind of got together. Um, I think that's one. That's the aspect I like about it, and that's the, that's what moves forward. The culture is the idea that you know, throw the rule book out for a minute, <coughs> and let's just concentrate on what will push the thing, yeah, elevate yeah, yeah. it ahead, isn't it? Totally. Just people like-minded, like. Um, just trying to earn, earn a living as an artist mm. off your own back, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you were a part of it, you took whatever you met, mate. There was yeah, nothing, yeah. we didn't want nothing. It was just, yeah, free entry. That's so sick. Affordable tattoos. Yeah, job done. Mm. Dragon Bar. Yeah, Dragon Bar. Now there's Just, a place. Justin Piggott, Dr. A gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Legendary place. Yeah, for yeah, man. Not just, you know, the, the, you know, the, um, the hostile and the... Uh, um, Vacants. Vacants, yes. All but, right. But, yeah, all Everyone right. Have a job there. You, you, can, you can get a job anywhere else, Justin, they give you a job. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know exactly. like, as a barman, he was a legend, man. Yeah, Graf has always been <sighs> yeah. associative with you too, hasn't it? You've always 100%. Been, you know, always been a part of it in one strand or another, haven't you? Mm. You know, um, but you were t telling me before we started that mm. you know life has had its ups and downs. And yeah, massively. And yeah. Give us a give us a, a rough breakdown. What you're comfortable talking about? Uh, well, obviously, I mean, most you know, I had addiction problems with heroin and crack cocaine for a long time. I was a function addict. Um, hid that hid that uh, addiction for many years. Mm. But it did get older me. COVID set about. And I ended up homeless for like three years. Three years? Three years homeless, um, working for gangs, selling drugs, um, just waking up ill. But I had no phone, had no bank, had a tracksuit on that would get dirty, and I'd, I'd acquire another one. Really? 
Really? Everything I I made, I got from benefits. I didn't have a bank, so it used to have to go into another junkie's account. And obviously I had to make sure I was with him, else my money would be gone. Like, he would smoke it. Really? Yeah. Um, but I, I got, it got so bad, I convinced myself that I wasn't coming back from where I was. Um, well, I, you were resigned to the fact that... Yeah, I, I, there was no way. It was too, the, the road ahead of me to, to maintain sobriety, to get a phone, to get a bank, to get a job, to get a flat. Yeah. was so far, I was. I just convinced myself that this was me until I die. And there was times, three ODs, I had that on purpose. And then one, the last one, what actually got me better was I threw myself out of a five-storey window. Five-storey window? Yeah, run and dove out after nine days being awake. W what? Yeah. How, how um, are you even here? I know, man, it's mad. Like, I broke... <clears throat> both my wrists, I've got plates in both of them, bad ones. Um, my spine in five places. F five places? Yeah, I've got metal, like fused spine, like, uh, oh, it's mad. Really? Yeah, I'm still in a bit of pain. The hip, my, both ankles are shattered, like disintegrated both my heels. This left one came out my leg on impact. What? Yeah, I know, shoot, I was naked when I did it. In my head, <laughs> I didn't want to get my clothes dirty. Which is a bit weird. Yeah, that. Because um, that's almost a forecast of. Survival. I'll figure it out later, but you know, for you now, know, I'm just me naked. And like, I thought I'd make more of a mess. Wow. Like, if I was naked. Okay, <laughs> I've got questions. <laughs> There's, <laughs> in all seriousness. So yeah. uh, let's let's reverse engineer this. All yeah. right? So, talk to me about that moment when you. When it happened. When you began. So using. that. Uh, began what prison? Using. Oh, using. Um, Using came about from just partying and, right. and using at the weekend, right. having a bit of a smoke, like being into the libertines, um, having friends yeah. that used. Um, always told myself that, like, I wasn't, uh, uh, like, it wouldn't get older me. Yeah. You know, I was young, like, 20-odd. Yeah, yeah. And it did, it did get older me, but, man, I tried so many, so many. I've been through three windshields, like, stolen cars, like, yeah. Exes and exes dad, one ex, the dad and the mum car I crashed. Yeah, just like f being locked, they like tried to get me clean and like they'd lock me in a room or whatever, and I'd manage to get out, get the key, and oh, just madness. Really? Yeah, once I was on the way to Howisham from Eastbourne, three o'clock in the morning, it was pitch black. I was going down like the A, whatever it was. Um, it's like a dual carriageway. There was no lights. I was doing about 90 because I was. Ill, and I was trying to get to London quickly and back before the person knew that I'd taken a car. And I hit a roundabout that just came out of nowhere and I fucking jumped it, bro. Like, you know, like roundabouts that are banked yeah, yeah, with yeah. trees on? Yeah. I was like going and then, like, trying to look at my phone where I'm going. As I looked up, I saw I was doing like 85, 90, and there was a roundabout, like 100 yards. I thought, I can't slam the brakes on because I'll skid and it will be bad. I'll roll this way. I was like, I'll try and jump it, being a BMX, yeah, I yeah. guess. That was yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did, I jumped it, cleared it completely. Kind of landed on the front left wheel. The wheel blew off. It was just like aluminium spokes left. But the three other ones were okay, and it kind of went into a ditch. I got out, it was raining. I was like, how am I going to get a jack under here? Because the wheel was so far in the mud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The car pulled up, helped me, I got the spare on. I was like, please start. It started. It was like driving like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it was yeah. fucked. I was in Howsham, yeah, it was like 10 minutes from where I'd left. Oh, no. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to London. Drove to London. <laughs> Got into Shoreditch here, looking up at the lights, like, ill as fuck. Crashed into the back of a car. <laughs> no way. Crashed in the back of a car. <laughs> Another car, yeah. Kind of, like, reversed out. It was, like, almost, like, I don't know how the car was still going, but it did. Got to the spot, picked up. Sorted myself out. I was like, right, well, I've got to get this car back to Eastbourne. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And just park it up like, I don't know what happened so, here. <laughs> I managed to get it back and then like, in the morning I blagged to like, can I use the car? And then like made out that I'd crashed it then in the morning. They still think that, so. Really? Not anymore? <laughs> <laughs> it's a revelation. No names, no Memoirs names. of, I did. But just stupid, like Frank, like manic, where that shit takes you, you know? Like, yeah. I'm a completely different person now. Of course, of course. Yeah, it's, you're, it changes you completely. The heroin is the physical addiction, the way it makes you so ill, you know? 
Um, but like I say, not a lot of people come back from where I was. No. Especially like, like I feel like, honestly, there's some weird reason why I have to be here, but I don't know what that is yet. Because yeah. I really tried, man. Like a few yeah. times it got bad, like mental health got real bad. So you OD'd three times? Three times, bad ones. For, yeah. Three car crashes? Yeah. Any other ones? Anything that you're just like, well, just, like any other... apart from throwing yourself out the window? Uh, notable? No, like, I mean, I got, I went stabbed a couple of times. I had guns to my head. Like, getting, I used to get, like rob drug dealers who kick doors off and shit when really? it got bad, yeah. Like, run into flats and with other junkies. And, yeah. Me got bad, yeah. Um, with that kind of addiction and those kind of people that you mm. you, know, you, you affiliate yourself mm. with, because you you see it on the street sometimes, and you see them them kind of, you know, the walk. back forward, yeah, galloping across, shouting at the other one. Mm. And you mentioned earlier about the whole uh, the benefits going into one person's account. I mean, it's, I guess it's all variable, but mm. a lot of this is just in house kind of working out where mm. to get the money and how to get yeah. the, the drugs. Mm. Every day it's all you do is you wake up, you're sick, and then you work out how to make some money and go to school. Really? And that's why, because you, because the addiction has taken hold of you, you're doing things that you wouldn't normally do as a normal person, mm. as, a, as, a, as a sober person, yeah. which then, when you're better, you start feeling guilty and shame, and that's when you start wanting to kill yourself and thinking, why have I just did this, this is not me, like, yeah. I don't know why. Like I've always felt bad mm. after doing something stupid to get a, get a couple hundred quid. Like I can categorically say that I've never looked upon a junkie mm. any other way than they ain't well. No, yeah, yeah. It's like you can't laugh at that shit. No, nah, no. Nah. It's not and funny. You know what? Most of the people out there begging, they're not. They don't want a hostel. I mean, you must know. Yeah. They don't want a hostel. They don't want food. That's free. Mm. They just want to get better. Yeah, mm. that's all they want. Yeah, because at the end of the day, heroin and crack addiction, you don't end up actually getting high anymore. You just are ill or you're normal. Really? There's no high, yeah. That first tolerant... chase is everything, and it lasts less the rest of your life. Yeah, and it's like you're, you're, you're vomiting, you're shitting your pants, you're fucking sweating, you, you feel uncomfortable in your own skin. Mm. Um... Can you, remember, can you remember, can you remember, because you were ill for a long time, mm. can you remember that first hit? Yeah, it was horrible. Really? Mm, made me sick. Really? Really sick, yeah. So it's like having your first drag of a cigarette? Yeah, you don't really know why you go back to it, but then there's like, it gets to the point where you're, not, you're no longer using to elevate a happiness, you're mm. using to cover a sadness. Yeah. And that's when it's very destructive, because mm. you're never going to be happy. No. You're only going to be not feeling unhappy for that mo few moments that mm. you're high. And that's what heroin is good for, is to take away the every shame. problem, every yeah. ache, every pain in a second. Really? Yeah. Gives you like a warm hug and you just, you don't care about anything anymore. Really? How long does that hit last for? Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm extremely <laughs> naive, so you should always excuse me, everybody, for those of you out there that uh, make it, wondering why I'm asking such naive questions. I'm no. absolutely, I'm so curious. Um, I know, I'm, I'm like, some people may be shocked about me talking about this, but I'd rather do it, and if it does help someone to see that I can get back from it. Yeah. Fucking, people message me all the time, and I will always answer mm. my honest. I was speaking to someone yesterday who was suicidal, told me I saved his life. Wow, that's, in, showed him that's a incredible. Showed him a video of, of, of my recovery. Um, and, like, so there's two filmmakers. Neil Gavin, he came to see me in rehab at Mild May in Hackney. When I was going through it, he filmed some bits, recorded some audio, and he's doing kind of like a, a little film. We're still trying to get it out there. It's, it's wow. just hard because we're both very busy. Yeah, yeah. And then another guy, Rodrigo, he recorded some audio and was gonna do this little short film about mental health, men's mental health, mm. more importantly, um, just to show like a recovery, story of recovery, and uh, it's possible, because mm. I tell you, I was convinced that you weren't I wasn't back. coming back. And if I met me and I just, you know, said, no, nah, look, I did it, like, mm. this is how I did it, there are people out there who will help you. Are, are there people that readily accept the idea of people helping them? Because some people, like you say, don't... Yeah, some people are, I feel, they're past help, yeah. sadly. 
because they're so accustomed to that life. They mm. don't know any different, and that difference is what scares them. What's the life expectancy of someone in that state? 45. 45. I don't know many junkies that started using in their 20s that lived, lived past 45. Really? I've lost so many friends. Really? Yeah, suicide and um, Jimmy, bless you. Rest in peace. Yeah, man. That is stark, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of them, man. Um, like I say, like I was convinced. Mm. Convinced. And like I talked to junkies on the street. Uh, I saw a wacky corner of junkies, users. Like, they're humans, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they were convinced as well. Um, and that's all, that's why it's so sad, is that all these people out here struggling are fucking really struggling. Like. Do you think people, Joe Public, have lost their, I mean, the world is full of apathy, but do you think they've lost a level of compassion? Are they so sanitised to seeing homes? Do you know what I, I, what I learned is from being homeless, people that have been affected by something of that, the caliber in their lives before mm. will be the person that stops and sit next to you, takes you to the cash bar and gives you 20 quid mm. because they can relate to it. Mm. Someone who can't relate to it will say, Why well, sit on the floor and get a job? Mm. How do you get a job with no address, mm. no ID, no bank? You can't get a bank without ID. No. How do you get ID if you've got no money? And, and no, you mm. need to go to, physically, actually go to. DWP or some kind of mission, get a social worker, and you're one of thousands, thousands. of people. Yeah. You know, and you need to have a phone, you need to be able to go to the appointments, you need to fucking, sometimes you don't even know where you can sleep, like. Right? Yeah. Bones at night. Yeah. Right. But like I say, I am way past that. I'm, I'm much better. Yeah. How, how long have you been sober for? Uh, two, well, uh, like yeah, two years, two years. Celebrate that, uh, my years. Yes. When was it? Uh, August nineteenth, twenty twenty-two. What was the What was the switch? I mean, apart from as you mentioned, you, you literally threw yourself out. Of <clears throat> yeah, that, I did that because I said to myself, if I die, then it's pain, sweating, mm. fucking tortures over. Yeah. If I survive, hopefully that will get me better. Mm-hmm. And did. Wow. I did. I managed to get on with housing first, timeless. Guy called Gary, um, great bloke. Enough respect, Gary. He came to see me in hospital. He got me, um, got me on benefits. Got me a bank. Got my passport sorted. Like all that shit. Yeah. Yeah, and then that just what, then once you have one, things start. I got a council flat. But it shouldn't come to that, should it? I mean, that's nah. a... so. So if I wasn't having to be discharged out of hospital, yeah. basically disabled, yeah. I would have been put into a hostel again. Yeah. Hostels were where I threw myself out. Hostels are full of people that don't want to get better. They're, or everyone, there may be four people in there that want to get better. Mm. Every person there is either someone that's come out of prison and they're discharged to, yeah. to a hostel. Lucky, most people aren't. No. Or they're homeless people that are in recovery, getting methadone, um, they might get housed. But it's hard, you have to go into hostels for maybe, some people are in there five years, yeah. before you get get the opportunity to be housed. And then anything happen within that time? Yeah, so, and, and you're, you're surrounded by people knocking on your door, yeah. coming and you're kind of using in your room, you're surrounded by it, you're yeah. surrounded by it. Um, yeah, it's very hard to get out of there. Yeah. Like I said, I had to throw myself out the window to get away from it, like, literally. What was the process? That was my only escape way, yeah, escape, yeah, way of escaping. Like, but that wasn't that wasn't preconceived. You you didn't know that that would be the outcome. <clears throat> All you knew is that I'm, no. I'm either going to live or die. You live or die. Yeah. And I just I was just I couldn't do it anymore. Like, couldn't do it. It was mm. the end of nine days. So obviously I'd made myself so fucking psychotic. I was psychotic yeah. from crack cocaine and, and no sleep. You start hearing voices, like, I was really? hearing people outside telling me they want to take my teeth out and all sorts. Like, I heard that. Like, they're, they're, like you're so convinced. Yeah. Nine days, like, Monday to Tuesday or Wednesday it was. Addiction is a motherfucker. It's fucked, bro. It's Anything fucked. you're addicted it, to, yeah. is, it's just hell. And the thing, what was scary to me is alcoholics, bro, like, that shit's out. It's legal. Yeah. Bro. Mental. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
That's one that's, that's one grip that I've always mm. tried to navigate. Mm. But maybe that's just through touring over the years. Yeah, of course. But you see a lot, don't you? Yeah. You see a lot. And yeah, it's more common than yeah, anything. Peak, man. Yeah, yeah. Tablets just left him at the back of the bus, like, <laughs> just shit like that, yeah. man. Sadness, like, yeah. it doesn't need to happen. No. And that's because it's so normal to see him chuck eight or nine tablets down his neck. Normalised, yeah. Yeah, massively. In rap and, like, lean and all that shit. Yeah. That's Catch just up with you. Like, just know, like, people... I don't think drug use is a problem if you are in control of it. Yeah. But to elevate, smoke a bit of weed, like... Right? Yeah, so, you know, Lemmy from Motorhead and yeah. just his, you know... The, <laughs> Just, I mean, you know, he's an absolute warrior, but that doesn't always apply to everybody. No, you no. can't be this, like... Yeah, I know, yeah. You know, yeah. Bullish and character. just know the risks, you know, and just have fun and just know that you ain't bigger than it. Mm. It will get hold of you. It will. Like, it gets hold of... It gets hold of the best. So, nine days without, fall out the window. Yeah, jump. <laughs> then... <laughs> and then... Yeah. You're left with straight to the hospital, still no... Nah. No fix. You're laying there. Mm. You're kind of in your own recovery. Well, they start. They give you painkillers, so that right. that's an opiate, so that will stop you from eating sick. Right, gotcha. I was on bags of morphine. Like, yeah. That the, for the pain, obviously. I was. I couldn't move. Like I yeah. couldn't even scratch my nose. Wow. Nine months I lay there. Nine months of laying in bed. And just. All my muscles disintegrated. I got a big belly on me. I was nine stone when I went in there. I came out about fourteen and a half. Yeah, they really did fix you, man. <laughs> but they give me like three meals a day. Yeah. I was having second puddings and that, going in a pantry full of yogurts. It was lovely. I kind of miss it. Yeah, dude. Like, I was thinking to myself, well, there's one addiction that actually does serve reasonably yeah, well. Yogurts, man. I don't like yogurt. I don't want yeah, yeah, yogurt fan. I love them. Never understood yogurts, mate. Really? I don't go down well with a cup of tea. No. I use the, I use the tea as the conduit, the vehicle. Yeah. Yogurts don't do it. No. But I get it, though, because these have become, these become the, 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 the fixes of. Fixing you. I, I'm, an, I'm an, I have a very addictive personality. I always have to. Have, I mean, I, luckily, my drug use is down to weed now. I just smoke a bit of weed, yeah. and that I have control of. Yeah. And I will be getting it from my doctor when I do the, the paperwork. But yeah, just so I don't, know, I can smoke it in public and blah, mm. I'll be on me, you know. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which the rest of the tattoo crew will be very happy to. Exactly, yeah. man. <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, I'm tattooing again. I, um, I've set up a little studio at my yard. It's proper. 100%. And you got a youngster? Yeah, I've got kids, yeah. yeah. I have, she's eight. She's in Switzerland with her mum. Eight years old. Yeah, she's great, man. Do you get a chance to see her? Yeah, I see her, I see her. She came here, I went there. I'm going to go there again. Yeah. Um, Switzerland's very expensive, it's the only problem yeah, at the moment. Is. And the fact that with Brexit and a pound being shit, it's just, it's harder and harder. But yeah, we make what we can. We FaceTime in and that. She's, mm. she's got her own, her own like, watch. Mm. So she's, uh, yeah, she's on me, she phones me. Mm. We do our little thing. We play games, and um, you're a rock star in your own right. And this this stories <laughs> are only testament to this. Yeah, I know. I know you you, you, you don't like those kind of claims so <laughs> so widely announced, but it's true. Mm. You know, you you're uh, a, a product of your environment. Yeah, massively. And you're you walk it how you talk it. Like to 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 know that there wasn't a Ross Hell out there mm. would be fucking weird. What's a day in life of um, what, what, what? <laughs> So I am, I'm in love. I've got a girlfriend. Yes. Jess, she's the best. Big up, Jess. Jess Brennan, yeah. Yep. She's a lovely Irish girl. Love that. Come on. Um, sorted me out a bit. So, yeah, I'm just getting on with life, really, tattooing, pr producing art, art um, on commission basis. Mm. Um, Instagram, people message me. I, mm. And I talk to people as well, like, with the whole mental health thing. Mm. Um, and just try and be more positive and not, not an advocate for survival, but just like proof that it's possible. Yeah. And for someone who was so far gone. Mm. Um, but don't let it put, don't let it put you off. I'm, I'm, I'm professional with my work. Yeah. Yeah, he came in on time and everything. <laughs> I was early. Was, yeah, he was early, mate. Was early. Uh, but, you're yeah. admired, my brother. Thank you. And that, that, that comes from an assortment of people, mm. um, some of which said, when are you going to get Ross on? Like, because your story is so worth telling and your mm. message is very clear. Yeah, man. Um, I think people admire the strength in somebody that, that um, after all they go through, is able to talk about it frankly. Um, well, I found with living as an addict, you lie a lot and lie to people you love. I don't like lying now. So mm. I, I feel like, and I found by being honest, 
um, people saw strength in my honesty. Mm. Because people might be watching this or watching videos I've made about recovery and feel like, fucking hell, like, if he can do it, maybe mm. I can. Mm -hmm. And that's enough for me. Like, one person sees that and they don't kill themselves that day. Amazing. Mm. Like, and I've had people message me and tell me that. So I will be honest. Like, I've mm. got nothing to hide. You're not your past. Mm. I, I don't feel like anyone should be labelled for what they've done in their past. Mm. Just, just watch what I do next and, and what I'm doing now and what I'm about. I've got nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to do some cool tattoos, man. Yeah, it'd be nice. I like to be nice to people. Exactly. Right, quick fire round. Two, mm. qu two, two quick questions. Um, what's currently on your playlist? I'm so intrigued. What's on your playlist at the moment? Uh, playlist at the minute, I'm listening to... What am I listening to? Um, blah, blah, blah. I can't even think you put me on the spot. Yeah, so you So, um, <laughs> um, 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 the only ones, Peter Perrett, he's got a new album coming out. I do like that. Nice. I'm listening to anything from, um, I can't even think of, of anything at the minute. What's on my playlist? What do you think of that new Frank Carter uh, Sex Pistols ensemble? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to go and check that out. Yeah, mad. Like, I'm kind because of, obviously Sex Pistols was so, for me, that whole. The whole the seditionaries brand yeah. like this is one of my shirts. Um, I, a lot of my inspiration comes from that. Mm. What Malcolm and Vivian did yeah. with seditionaries huge. And Frank obviously being a, a friend and him like I've messaged him, told him like, bro, how are you singing for the sex pistols? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. mad. But yeah, like um, back to my playlist. I do like I like all music. I like I can listen to anything from um, like Beastie Boys, Sure Shot. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, their first punk stuff yeah. through to their newer stuff. Mm. Um, Modern Lovers, Dead Boys, um, like all New York stuff, MC5, mm. but then Aretha Franklin, Ludovic, <sighs> Al an Audi, like mm. an Audi um, composer. Mm -hmm. I can listen to all of that. Mm. Um, squeeze. Like, squeeze, yeah. Fucking, oh, I can't even think of band names. It's mad. Roots Maneuver. Mm, mm, yeah, I've been listening to that brand new second hand now. again. It's amazing, bro. <sighs> it's the lyricist, the god, just like genius, bro. It's just the, in, and the instrumentals, like yeah. it takes me back right yeah, back yeah, to yeah. the Same. era we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, ninety nine. It was. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Just the stark um, depth of. But, yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Um, you know, Dead Kids. Did you ever remember that band? Yeah. There was a ba there was the bass player Adam. He <laughs> used to play bass uh, for Rodney. Really? When he played Glastonbury, wow. Adam passed away. Leukemia, bless him. Oh, but, um, rest in peace. Wow. Yeah, okay. Adam Dean, who's on old friends, old London head. Mm. Um, yeah, I remember seeing him outside of Cat Mutton, and he was sat there with Rodney, and I was like, "No way!" No like, way. Yeah, <laughs> it's too much for me. Like, My would just be spinning around. Like, I'm quickly go around the corner for a second. Banana Clan. Yeah, Banana Clan. Oh, um, do you remember that punk band Mummy? Mummy, I think so. They don't play down, like, Sussex bands. Uh, yeah, uh, Kentway, yeah. Kentway, yeah. I used to play Crypt and Hastings, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, fuck. I used to love that. There was a real... It has these ups and downs, the punk genre. Yeah. Um, as does UK hip-hop, to be fair. Yeah, of course, man. Okay, so um, outfits. What, uh, what, what brand are you... What, what brands are you on? Uh, I always wear Nike. Nike? Burberry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Burberry, yeah, man, uh, vintage Burberry. Yeah, like uh, Ralph Lauren. Yeah, vintage Burberry. There's something about it. Yeah, always. I've always got a pair of track bottoms on lately. Yeah, yeah. Levi's, I right, Levi's. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. yeah, can't take the punk out of that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What's the future, my brother? I mean, we've um, kind of skirted over it, but you know, this tattoo thing. Yeah, just it, tattooing. It, it only it. seems to be on the incline. It seems like. Yeah, a lot so going I'm going to do. I've got. I'm talking to a few people in Berlin. I'm gonna do. Um, I want to take this, this kind of. It's talks of opening up, um, some buildings and doing some bits, wow. but like I can't say too much because it's kind of we're still talking about it. Yeah, we don't jinx shit. But yeah, um, more of that. Um, I'm talking to prods as well about doing maybe one in London again. Um, yeah, and I just want to travel a bit more now. I'm, I can travel without worrying about my addiction. Yeah, yeah. It's, like it kept me, it kept me in London. You know. Yeah. You can't. You can't go anywhere, but um, yeah, just doing doing more more that. 
fucking great. Honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, Ross. My fucking guy. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I'll kill a killer podcast. We've got whisked away there into another time, another era. But yeah, much man. respect to Ross. And big shout out to you lot for requesting getting a gentleman on. And uh, God, it was worth it. Yeah, big shout out. Uh, Sharon is caring. Remember, tell a friend to tell a friend. Crime doesn't pay, but neither do they. All right, you stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Easy. Stay lucky. <laughs> <laughs>